please don't forget to subscribe because a lot of people that watch my videos don't subscribe apparently and hit that bell so you stay informed with the latest and greatest videos from this channel. I'm also live every day on twitch.tv slash Hasanabi after 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm going to uh, look at what is going on with this Ilhan Omar story and Marjorie Taylor Greene. We've already done the highlights of Marjorie Taylor Greene, as you guys already know. Uh, we, we looked at the highlights of Marjorie Taylor Greene a bunch of times, so it's like kind of silly to consistently talk about that over and over again. She's a certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass P word, make that pull out game week, as everybody knows. Yeah, but like, works. instead of being sexy, imagine if wet ass P word and being a certified freak was about believing in psychopathic conspiracy theories and, uh, you know, just yeah, like I regular, regular stuff that Republican <laughs> constituents <laughs> believe. Okay. And some, uh, Republican representatives also believe in, but won't say it out loud. But some of them do say it out loud now because that's where we're at in the country where like, <laughs> but uh, this is the age old. Yes, this is the squad W argument, which is double standard. Why is Ilhan Omar alive and breathing when Marjorie Taylor Greene has literally been murdered as in, you know, asked to be censured and removed from her committee positions because the Republican Party, this after finding King. out about all of this stuff, which they already knew, the QAnon stuff, the murder names, Pelosi stuff, all of the things that Marjorie Taylor Greene has said and done. The Republican Party did what? Did they censure her? Did they say, hey, please stop doing this? No, they put her on the education committee because that's what the Republican Party believes in America needed, okay? It goes to show how much they give a fuck about education. For we are talking about the House of Representatives stuff. and that is uh, considered the madhouse by the Senate. And that's why a bunch of Republican senators, including Mitch McConnell, have uh, come out with strong words against Marjorie Taylor Greene. Mitch McConnell even ended up calling her a cancer. Before we get to this part of the story, now the GOP doing the uh, no you actually move or old heads will know this as the squad W defense. If they can hit us, then uh, we should be able to hit back on them. But let's hear what Mitch McConnell had to say about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Also incredible title from the WAPO opinion, po uh, opinion. Has Mitch McConnell been struck by a Jewish space laser writes Dana Milbank. We've known about this shit for a while, and Mitch McConnell chose today to take a stand. Or yesterday Marjorie to Taylor Greene. He pointed directly at her she without actually calling her by name. It's pretty clear, though, who he's talking about. In a statement released by his office, McConnell said, and I quote, Loony lies and conspiracy theories are cancer for the Republican Party and our country. Somebody who suggested that perhaps no airplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, that horrifying school shootings were pre-staged, and that the Clintons crashed JFK Jr.'s airplane is not living in reality. This has nothing to do with the challenges facing American families or the robust debates on substance. Mitch McConnell be like, everybody knows the Pentagon was hit by a plane, you know, controlled by Ahmadinejad which is why we need to nuke Iran immediately, like tomorrow, I mean. And also, school shootings are not fake, they're real, but they're also very good. And what we need to do is arm more teachers so they start shooting their students. Therefore, that's built in austerity, as you know. We, this is a program we started in my home state of Kentucky. Uh, it's built in austerity. It's celebrated so that the wealthy Kentuckians can take more of their bacon home. Uh, and the oppressive government doesn't take their money away from them. <laughs> My uncle just said that McConnell's being blackmailed to say that. With what, dude? Nussy picks? Like, what can you... He is the devil. You should ask him because, like, actually, unironically ask him because I want to know how deep the, the conspiracy hole goes in your in your uncle's brain. They Conservatives are, are so good at coming up with uh, different ways of avoiding reality. It is always remarkable. So I, I truly enjoy seeing like how far that fucking... Oh, oh, easy. Oh, he said his Chinese wife. Of course he did. Okay, good stuff. There you go. Oh, just textbook racism. Got it. Okay. Yes, Mitch McConnell's wife is indeed Chinese. These are not red flag incidences. They are not fake, and it's terrible, uh, the loss that these families ha go through and, and their friends as well. And it should never happen, and it doesn't have to happen if we would protect our children properly. Wait. <laughs> which is why which is why I was trying to do another shooting on the on the people that got away, you know? The kids that got away, I wanted, I wanted to go up and threaten them. If you remember, what she did specifically was literally walk up to David Hogg in the fucking halls of Congress or like while he was walking in Washington, D.C., found David Hogg, 
started chasing him around and was going, I have a gun on me. I have a gun on me. Do you want to take my gun away? I have a gun on me, which is like, what are you trying to do? <laughs> it's like, you want to take my goddamn gun away? Huh? Is that what you want? Is that what you, I bet you'd like that, you sick freak. Take it away. Take it away from me. So that was the, the first part of the Marjorie Taylor Greene saga. And now Fox News, uh, which is the propaganda arm of the Republican Party, and the psychopaths over at the House of Representatives were like, ha actually... The real person that needs to be kicked out of the Republican Party is Liz Cheney, the ground which I agree with, by the way, oh. just by virtue of being uh, related to Dick Cheney, who is a demon. Uh, Liz Cheney, why? Because she is on board with Donald Trump being impeached for the insurrection, and instead they want to protect Marjorie Taylor Greene. And the reason, the way they want to do that is by doing the classic no you status. It's a really powerful card. This is um, not a tier one defense. It's probably a tier three defense. Really cool stuff from the Republicans. And it hopefully in this circumstance, it won't fucking work because protect Ilhan Omar at all costs. Ilhan Omar did nothing wrong. Ilhan Omar has said nothing wrong. It's by virtue of her existence that people are saying she must be anti-Semitic and shit like that. So here's what the Republicans are doing now to defend against the Marjorie Taylor Greene stuff. They are attacking Inhan Omar. And there's an hours long meeting last night where minority leader Kevin McCarthy met with Greene to try to work out some sort of punishment over those comments she made. But Greene evidently did not back down. And now Republicans are floating the idea of stripping Greene of just one of her committees to appease Democrats. But others say if Democrats are going to come after Greene, then Ilhan Omar's fair game, a proposed amendment calls for Omar to be removed from her committee assignments as well in light of conduct she has exhibited, arguing she's made anti-Semitic comments in the past. Now, Democrats are already fighting back. Congressman Dean Phillips wrote, get a grip on reality. Representative Omar didn't belittle a school shooting survivor, claim that no airplane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, insist lasers started the California wildfires, or endorse the assassination of the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, I think it's not an equivalent at all, Bill, but, you know, I understand what's going on here. Here. This is politics. It's hardball. And given what's going on in terms of the war, civil war within the Republican Party over Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, you know, you hear what's coming from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, saying that basically her conspiracy theories and ideas are a cancer within the Republican Party and tearing at the fabric of the country. I think there are people who then say, well, let's find a vulnerable Democrat and try to go after her to try to you know, dilute the power of what's being said about Marjorie Taylor Greene. Well, that brings up um, what I wanted to talk about with Josh, because... Mar well, I guess I didn't really need to say anything because, you know, Juan uh, already covered everything. I was going to say those things, but uh, he already said them, which is why I don't need to say it again. The only thing that you can shit on Inhan Omar about, the only thing that is like the edge case that you could fucking uh, shit on Inhan Omar on is the, the hypnotized uh, language that she used when she was like, Israel hypnotized America or the world or whatever the fuck she said a very long time ago. That is, again, like nothing in comparison to what Marjorie Taylor Greene has said. That's not the reason One why day. they're shitting on her. You, the reason why they're shitting on her is because she has criticized do. Israel now. And they actually, there is more you can shit on Inhan Omar over. She said Margaret, uh, she said Thatcher was her female Sunday. icon. That was pretty bad, but that's not something that uh, these, these dipshits would ever get upset about uh, at all. That's normal stuff that every fucking Democrat and Republican says. She sucks at Among Us? No, she doesn't. She was really good at fucking murdering people at Among Us. Anyway, Ilhan Omar is, in my opinion, one of the greatest congresspersons in contemporary American politics. I love her. I think she's awesome. There are, she's my favorite politician, that's for sure. Um, I like her more than AOC even. Uh, I think she's, she's awesome. She's great. She is very fucking brave, okay, for being able to do what she does. She is literally fucking brave. You can call me a simp all you want, but this person get, is at the at the crosshairs of, of the Democratic Party. She's at the crosshairs of the Republican Party all the time. And the Democrats are gigantic pieces of shit for constantly throwing her under the bus or at least lighting the fire over and over again, allowing Republicans to even use this as a line of attack to be like, yeah, you know, Omar is anti-Semitic, actually. That's true. She is anti-Semitic. Like, fuck you. You guys are all pieces of shit for not Ass. defending her. I have tremendous fucking respect for her. I think she is brilliant. I think she's great. She is a much needed voice. And that's all I got to fucking say. Uh, one of the funniest uh, arguments was when she talked about APAC and the power 
that uh, APAC holds, like the power of influence APAC wields over the American Congress. And everyone was like, that's so anti-Semitic. It's literally a fucking lobbying firm that's not anti-Semitic. Criticizing Israel is not saying Jews are bad, okay? And beyond that, criticizing APAC, which is a special interest lobbying group, for Israel, or American Israels, Israelis, that has literally fucking curbed back American free speech laws in the most significant and uncon most unconstitutional way possible, successfully, by the way, by hassle, hassle. making teachers and shit sign like BDS forms before they can get a job. Saying that that is a powerful lobby is uh, anti-Semitism is psychotic. I feel like hypnotizing the world is a pretty accurate statement. Is it wrong because anti-Semitic people can feel emboldened by this rhetoric? Hypnotizing is is definitely a Love fucking callback to. I mean, dude, like Jews can do hypnosis and shit like that is is regular anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Sorry, that's just the truth. I, I've talked about conspiracy theories and how anti-Semitism is rooted within the heart of most conspiracies before. Like literally, fucking. It is a very common conspiracy theory. It is a very common fascist talking point. Like, you know, Jewish curse, Jewish hypnosis. They are dog whistles for sure. You're stretching about Israel has definitely hypnotized the world. If you live on no tries to both sides of shit. Man, I criticize fucking Israel all the goddamn time. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm simply stating that using, dude, I, I can't even fucking say using hypnotizing was a bad fucking, uh, a, a bad way to, to talk about that. No, it's not. It is literally a bad way to talk about it. But outside of that, you can't attack her on anything. It's fucking bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. You substitute hypnotize to manipulate and boom, you're gone. It's done. You, you fixed that problem. That is some OG anti-Jew, anti-Roma shit. Yup. For sure. 100%. So look, dude, I, I, guys, I am unfortunately too well versed in conspiracy theories so when i hear something like that i'm like that is that you could say that that's uh, anti-semitic for sure regardless though it doesn't matter because again it's fucking bullshit the rest of it is bullshit the rest of it is a massive stretch and democrats engaged in that by the way like democrats actually fucking engaged in this in this witch hunt against ilhan omar so didn't she say she didn't know hypnotism was linked with anti-semitism she did she did say that i'm i'm stating that like she, even though she did apologize for it, that is like the only thing that you could ever fucking criticize her for, for her usage of the word hypnosis because of its, its uh, fucking anti-Semitic dog whistle, basically. But she herself is ESL. That could have been part of the reason. But again, she fucking apologized for it. Doesn't mean literally hypnosis. She means manipulated. And regardless of that, I'm still 100% on board and defending her. English is her third, fourth language. Yeah, it's not even fucking second language. Most people don't even know that though. Most people don't think that's the fucking anti-Semitism. Most people think she's just anti-Semitic because she has a fucking hijab and she's brown and she's Muslim, okay? That's the reality. I'm sorry, that's literally the fucking reality. Most people just think, oh, you're Muslim. You must be anti-Semitic, you must hate Jews. You're Marjorie going. Taylor Greene responded to McConnell saying that by tweeting this, that the real cancer for the Republican Party is weak Republicans who only know how to lose gracefully. This is why we are losing our country. How do you see it, Josh? at one side or the other and put our jerseys on and understand that like, okay, I got to defend the indefensible here because they wear, you know, a Republican shirt. No, thank you. I, Marjorie Taylor Greene, no, thank you. Elon Omar, no, thank you. Let's call it a day. Let me get in here on another topic. Well, let's not fucking call it a day, dipshit. What the fuck do you mean, dude? Uh, let's call it a day. Come on, let's, let's get one. One for one. Blood for the blood god. 